Yo! Yo! <laughs> What's up? This is Patrick. And this is Buck Woody. And in this video, we're going to dig into some purview. Stay tuned. That's right. If you find this for the very first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date from all the videos from both Adam and this guy. Buck, welcome back. I guess the first video was a success because you're back in the queue. All right. Yeah, my uh, mom watched it. She was very pleased. So we got at least one, right? We got one view. I need you to refresh my memory a little bit. Mm -hmm. I know we were talking about the intelligent data platform, That's but right. there's so many layers and pieces to it. I, just, I need to get caught up. All right. Remember, we talked about the intelligent data platform, the IDP. Yeah. And this IDP. is actually a suite of things that are best of breed tools by themselves, but they also work well together. There's yeah. operational databases like SQL Server and Cosmos and all that. Mm -hmm. We also have analytics, this program called Synapse you may have uh, heard about. And then bit, there's this thing bit. called data governance. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Now, the neat thing in the IDP is that you get all the stuff layered on top of it from Azure. You get Azure Active Directory, Defender, Microsoft Sentinel. You get the policy controls. So wow. not only are they best in breed by themselves, they work together well. But you remember last time what I said was we need to start with governance. And we talked a little bit about what governance is. Yeah, yeah. It's sort yeah. of tracing your data yeah. from beginning, yeah. you know, to end. One of the my favorite parts about that, it's become viral amongst our little IT community because I stole one of those slides and it was about the reality of your data. Oh yeah, man, yeah, yeah. that was really it's a good. Big deal. You know, it's kind of interesting because a lot of presentations don't start with governance. They usually yeah. start with the data. Yep. But let's yep. start with governance here. Okay. And the product we're talking about today is called Microsoft Purview. Purview. And you'll notice when you see something called Azure something, yeah. it works in Azure. Yeah. But if you see it called Microsoft something, even though it's in Azure, it works in Azure and on-prem. So right? there, there's actually some type of method to that naming madness that's going on. Okay. All right. Right. Okay. right. Yeah. Microsoft yeah. does like to rename things, but we usually <laughs> have a reason. Purview is two big pieces. And we're going to talk about one of them today. First big piece is risk and compliance. The one we're going to talk about, though, is the suite or family of features for data governance. And there's really four that we think about. A data map will scan and show relationships between your data. Yeah. So if yeah. I have stuff all across my organization, yeah. it'll go and scan all those artifacts. Yeah. And, okay, right. In right. Azure, on-prem, and even in those other brand X clouds. So, okay. And we'll go get anything. You know uh -huh. that Excel spreadsheet that's under Bill's desk? Yeah. The SQL database that you have over there on the cash register, it'll scan all that. Wow. So wow. that's the scan. So you register the source, right? That creates something called a data catalog. Now, the data catalog is where you can add things like tags and you can add business terms like inventory, uh, right? Inventory is not a technical term. Yeah. It's what your business thinks inventory is. So can I add Go like ahead. a description of inventory? Absolutely. Oh. So it's a typical search, like you're going to search it like you would the web. So I can Bing my data. That's right. Okay. That's right. Okay. And not only that, we just introduced the abilities. Now, this is going to blow your mind to set policies in the catalog for like SQL Server data that will then create the users and the privileges for RBAC in SQL. But what? you do it in the catalog. I got to see this. Okay. I got to see this. Okay. It, 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 it's off the hook. All right. Then finally, when you're done, you get this data insights. So it puts these beautiful reports up. It's like a, a PBIX file that shows you the heat map of where your data is, oh. how much you have, and all that. And then finally, there's one feature in there where you can share the data and people get a link to the data that you've made wherever it is. That can be internal or if you've got a trusted partner can be external. Wow. It's just, it's just, it's crazy. It's wow. crazy. So Patrick, what I've done here is I'm just kind of starting out in the portal. By the way, it's web-based. You can hit it with whatever. And so the first thing I do is I register my sources. Now those sources, by the way, can be anything. Azure storage, AWS storage, S3 buckets, SQL server, text files, whatever it happens to be. Once I've registered them, they show up as sources and I can begin to put some annotations on those. It's kind of bizarre. I can even start putting them into groups. Like I can say this data belongs to something I call sales or a web storefront. 
or HR data or whatever, right? It can do any of that. And then all I have to do is set up a scan rule for a repeating schedule or a one-time schedule that goes down and looks at that data. So of course, once we set up that scan, um, you do have to provide you know, your name and password. If it's like a SQL database or an Oracle database, it'll go get the schema and the details. Wow, and wow. And populate that for you. So that's pretty cool as well. So this is where I can give people access to this and they can go discover all the data assets across my organization or enterprise. And even better, once we've scanned it and everything, I can also classify it. So I can add things like, hey, this social security number, this is medical data, this is whatever. We've got a ton of them for you and you can make more. Then you can search on that and you can do stuff based on that. But here's the payoff. You said you wanted to bang your data. Doesn't yeah. matter who you are. Yeah. If you're allowed to see the data sources, mm -hmm. you type in a keyword, a sensitivity, a tag, a business term, and back it comes. Wow, wow. I've played with Purview a little bit because I scanned my Power BI tenant and it pulls sure. all the data, get, gets all the schema for my data sets. It's remarkable, I will say this. But so once I do this, I remember in the first video I said this and you didn't disagree with me. We used to call this a data dictionary. Patrick, how many, how many times have you seen companies try to implement a data dictionary? Uh, I'm gonna say this. One million times. <laughs> and, and okay, now let me ask a follow-up question. How many of them work? Uh, well. <laughs> the reason why is it's brittle because yes. things change. Yeah. Um, it's in a certain tool and only works with certain data sets. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. not everybody's allowed access to it. That is a key thing right there, but right. Yeah. Right. So what we're going to do is solve all that. As you've just seen, it can go scan repeatedly. Yep. It's editable by the right people. Yep. It lives so it can go out and do these things. It's not brittle. Mm -hmm. It's not tied to one system. It's not in SQL Server. It's not in Oracle. It's not in Cosmos. It can work across all of those and everybody can hit it. And you think, wait a minute, I don't know, it feels insecure. No, no, you're only going to let the people see what they're allowed to see. Gotcha. And it doesn't mean because they know where the data is, they can get to it. Right. It just knows that, that you have something called inventory. All right, final piece. The other thing it does for you is it creates something that we care a lot about in data science, lineage, as you can Ooh. see here. Lineage is just where things come from and where they go to. Every time you touch data, you're changing it. Yep. And if you change it too much, it can make a difference. Point zero 0.01, is different, right? Than than if we if we just chop off everything after yeah. the decimal point. Yeah. So this lineage lets me, as the data scientist, go look at the data I'm I'm working with and go, hold on a minute, I need to go see where this came from. Yeah. Can I trust that source? Is yeah. it biased? Do I have enough? Is it representative? And you, as the data administrator, can say who's changed this and yes. in what way. So, yeah. Patrick, I've given you a functional data catalog yes. yeah. that also is a data searching, yeah. that also is a data lineage tool, yes. that also is a data governance tool, Microsoft Purview. That people can truly, truly access and use yep. and discover data in their organization. All right, That's right. what do you guys think? You got any questions, you got any comments about this purview? I love to know. You know what to do. Post it in the comments below. It's your first time visiting the guy in the Q channel. Hit that subscribe button, like my video, big thumbs up. As always, from Adam, Buck, and myself, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.